Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. We are going to do a great song today by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Road Trippin'. So we have Frusciante on acoustic um, doing a really cool um, finger picking pattern here. So if you're not used to finger picking, um, this is, it goes pretty quick, but it's a pretty simple repeated pattern kind of technique that he's doing. So um, as we get through the track, hopefully you'll start getting the hang of it and get locking into the, the feel of the groove and that, that'll help you. And the, the left hand stuff is, is pretty simple. All right, so we are in standard tuning and we're gonna go through this whole track here. Before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the little notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. And check out, please check out my Guitar Academy. It's at guitarlessons365.com. It's got all my guitar courses. We even got acoustic courses as well. And um, we have a great community over there. And I hope you'll you'll join us if you haven't already. So let's start here with, uh, well, we have this intro, which is pretty much this, the verse riff uh, section of the song. Um, and then we have uh, a couple variations that he does during while he's playing this riff when the, during the verse, usually during the first and third verse of the song. And then we have a chorus section as well. So that is uh, a completely different part. Uh, got some cool stuff to it. And then we have an interlude section, which is pretty challenging uh, and moves around pretty quick too. Um, and a quick little easy outro. So let's start with the intro here. We have this. So that is kind of goes a couple of times without any vocals here. That is really the verse of the song as well. Now that last mm. chord there, for Sean Day, a lot of times he kind of slightly varied what he did there. Uh, but for a majority of the time, he does kind of what I just did, how I ended it each time. So we're going to do it that way instead of trying to nitpick exactly how he ends it. But it's pretty much always sounds pretty close to that, what I just did. Um, so you'll be able to get away with it. So we're going to start here. We're going to hold um, the second fret on the D string and then the third fret on the high E. So we're going to just pretty much just hold that chord for two bars. So what we do here is we're going to have a picking pattern that first starts with your thumb on the D string. Then you're gonna pick the thumb on the D and then the middle finger is gonna take care of the high E string, the one where you're playing that third fret. So we have this so far. Now the this technique, uh, this finger picking technique, you hear it called Travis picking and everything. It's basically you're creating like a constant rhythm with a thumb. So pretty much every quarter note the thumb is playing. Um, and that's how you kind of lock into that feel of the, the thumb just going and then all the other notes kind of go around it. So we're gonna start with the first beat, the thumb, and then on the second beat, you're gonna have the thumb and the high E string. Now the next beat, the third beat, you're gonna have the thumb on the D again, and you're gonna have, a, but it's gonna be part of an eighth note pattern, so you're gonna have the one, a three, and that upstroke, that upbeat is gonna be on the B, open string with your, I'm using my index finger. So we have this on the third beat. So we have this first beat, I'm oh, sorry, first beat, then second, then third. So it's like one, two, three, and, and then the fourth beat, just the thumb on that D again. So we have this. So that's the first measure. So that's basically the first half of the pattern though. And then for the second measure, you're still gonna hold the same notes in the left hand. You're gonna now though start on the first beat with the thumb on the D and the high E string there with your middle finger. So that's beat one. Then on the next two beats, we're gonna play eighth notes. So that's gonna hit the thumb still on the D string, followed by the open B. And then the third beat is going to be the thumb on the D string, followed by the high E string. So we have this now, beat one, beat two, 
be three. So we have one, two, and three, and, and then you're going to end the measure on beat four with, once again, just the thumb on the D. So the, those two measures, one, two, three, and four, one, two, and three, and four. So that is the pattern you want to get locked in your hand. Obviously, we're doing a lot slower right now, so we have this... So as you speed the pattern up, you're really going to feel that thumb. It's kind of driving the whole thing. All right, so after those first two measures, you're basically going to take the same uh, pattern that we did before. You're going to move it, though, over to different strings. You're going to take the third, play the third fret here on the A string and then the fifth fret on the B. And the open string in the middle instead of the B string now, obviously since we're playing it, is going to be the G string. So the strings you're going to be playing this pattern on are the A string, G string, and B string. So just start with the same pattern that you did in the first measure on those three strings. And then, same as the second pattern that we did, the second measure, And that's it. So we have this. So all together. Alright, and then you would just just repeat that. That is the structure of the intro, but also the verse, just repeating that section. So it's amazing how intricate it sounds when you speed it up, but when you break it down and simplify it, that's how you want to do it at first. Kind of get locked down with the rhythm and then slowly speed it up. All right, so when the vocals come in, we have just that same thing that just continues. So that's the, the first verse. But then after he plays through the riff a couple of times, just like he's played in the intro, uh, you hear this variation. So the first measure is going to be the same. And the second measure starts the same way as well. It starts with just the note on the D string and the third fret there on the high E together. But here's where it varies. Instead of doing this, we have this. You're going to two, you're going to reach up and grab, a, you're going to hit that note on the D string and then reach up and grab the fifth fret on the high E string back to the note on the D, and then back down to the third fret on the high E string, and then once again ended with the, uh, on the fourth beat with the uh, thumb on the D. So we have this. So from the first measure, and then everything else is the same. Then you'll hear it repeat that again. Alright, so now you're going to hear that variation played like uh, two or three times in the first verse. I don't really hear it too much in the second verse, and then he incorporates it again in the third verse. So just watch out for that. Um, it's pretty important to the, to the verse, so uh, make sure you don't miss it. Alright, now let's get to the chorus section. This is a pretty cool part that is repeated. Uh, the first time you hear it, it's only repeated a couple times, and later on the song is report, uh, you know, repeated longer. So it looks like this. All right, so that's just basically the same thing repeated twice there. We're going to start this. All you need is just your index finger at the first fret on the B string. All right, so we're going to start here with picking um, this pattern. It's going to be the open A string and the high E string together on the first beat. So the A string here in this measure is going to be the one the thumb's hitting, the open A. 
on every beat. So we have first beat, those two notes together. Second beat, open A string again with a thumb. And then the index finger is gonna play the B string, which you can see is uh, the, suck, the being held at the first fret. So we have this. Then on the third beat, the A string again with a thumb, and this time the high E string by itself on the up of the third beat. So we have this. And then that open A on the fourth beat. So we have this. All right, now I'm gonna pretty much take that same pattern, but obviously since we're playing different notes, different strings, it's not gonna feel like that. Uh, but we can move into this next one by playing the second fret on the A string with your middle finger, and then the third fret on the B string with your pinky. All right, so from there, we're gonna pick the first two notes, the, on the first beat, we're gonna pick those two notes together. And now, so this B note there on the second fret of the A string is gonna be the what the thumb plays on every beat. So both those together on beat one. Beat two, you're gonna pick that B and then the open G string, then that B note again, and then over to the, uh, I'll, I'll just call it the A string. I don't want you to confu get confused here. So we have the A string and the B string together, then A string, G, A string, B, and then the A string. So one, two, and three, and so, so far, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Now take that same pattern. We're gonna move it to this chord we played a little bit earlier, the third fret there on the A string, fifth fret on the B with the open G. So that same pattern we just did in the previous measure. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna move up and play this G major chord right here. And a good way of playing it is just to keep that pinky there on the B string. And you're gonna play the, so you're moving that pinky up to the eighth fret. And then the seventh fret with your ring finger here at the, on the high E string. And then the seventh fret on the G string as well uh, with your middle finger. And then the open D. So it's just like a D major chord just moved up to the seventh fret, but played with some funky fingerings. So the picking here is you're gonna pick. So you can just, you can use all three fingers if you like using your ring finger. Uh, a lot of non-classical players don't like doing the rock guys. They won't use their, their ring finger, so like that. So whatever you feel comfortable with, but uh, you're gonna pick the open D and the high E together. And then you're gonna pick the B string and then the G string, and then repeat that again. But this time, hold it a little bit, that chord. So we have this. So you hear that, that zero and that end with the, with the seven on the high E string together. So the open D and the high E together. So all together. go back into the verse again. All right, so now we'll get to the interlude. The interlude happens at, where's that, the one minute and 38 second mark. Um, and this it, this is by far the most challenging part of the, the song. So let me play through it real quick and then I'll take you through it uh, note for note. So that is a pretty crazy little section there. So we're gonna start here with an E minor seventh chord. So it's gonna make sure you keep the low E open. Then you're gonna bar the seventh fret from the fifth string across. All right, now you're gonna add the ninth fret on the D and then the eighth fret on the B. So when you have that now, 
and it's an E minor 7 chord. So from there, what we're going to do is the picking is going to be the low E open along with the B string. So I'm using the, my middle finger on the B. Then the index finger on the G string. So that's beat one. So one and. So those are eighth notes. And then the downbeat of the two is that you, your thumb's gonna play the D string. And then the index finger is gonna play the G string on the upbeat. So we have one and two and. Then you're gonna play the thumb on the A string, which is being held at the seventh fret. And then once again, the middle finger grab the uh, eighth fret on the B string uh, on the upbeat. So we had this one and two and three and then we have a pause for a beat. So we have this in the first measure. All right, now in the second measure, we're going to play an A dominant seventh chord. Um, that's just going to be a, a you just bar the fifth fret there. Um, even though we're really going to be using just strings the low E through the G string here. But you're going to need that bar, and you're going to be also playing the 7th fret of the A, and then the 6th fret there on the G string. So the picking is going to be this. On beat 1, you're going to play the E string and the G string together. Then on beat 2, you're going to have the 8th note. You're going to play the thumb on the A string with the index then following on the D. So we have this. Then on the 3rd beat, the thumb is going to be on the low E and then the middle finger on the G, on the upbeat. So we have this, one, two, and three, and. So you can just kind of just, from there, this is the part where he'll, he might kind of vary this section a little bit, but you can kind of pause for the beat there too. Um, and then we go to this C major chord. So we're going to just play a basic C major bar chord which we've probably done before. It's third fret there on the A string and borrowing the fifth fret of the a D, G, and the B. Pick the, at first you're going to pick the A string and the B string together. Then you're going to pick, this one's got a little bit different feel to it. You're going to play the D string on the second beat with your thumb. Then the open, I mean, uh, uh, then the G string on the upbeat of two. So one, two, and you're gonna hold that note for a, a, a beat, and then you're gonna add the fifth fret there on the beat, and then stop. So there's not a lot going on there. All right, and then we're gonna take this up. I'm gonna just play what we have so far. You're gonna go up now and play a, uh, a D7 chord, D dominant seven. So that's gonna be a bar across five, from the fifth finger across at the fifth fret. And uh, you're gonna also have the seventh fret there on the B and the seventh fret on the D. So you play that, the A and the D string together, uh, A and the B string, I'm sorry, together first. Then on beat two, the D string, followed by on the upbeat, the G string. So we have this one, two, and, then you're gonna play the on the third beat, the thumb on the A string and the upbeat on the B. And then kill it for the last beat. So we have this one, two, and three, and so so far. Alright, now when he Basically, from there, he, he starts kind of repeating everything. There will be slight variations of how he plays the chords, but instead of just getting everything nitpicking, um, you can kind of just play it repeatedly like this, which sounds fine. Except, what we have here is the first time through, we're ending with that D7. You can play the same way through again. Even though, like I said, the, like the second time he plays the C, it might be a little bit more active. You know, you can kind of do what you want with the chords a little bit if you get used to that little picking. That he, that's basically what he's doing. But or you can just kind of do what we did the first time through. All right. So the second time you're playing through these chords, the last chord is changed from a D7 to a an F sharp diminished chord. So. How do you play that? You're going to play the 4th fret on the D. 
use your index there. And then your ring finger is going to play the fifth fret on the G. Then you're going to have the second fret there on the B string. I'm sorry, the fourth fret on the B string. And then the fifth fret on the high E. So you're going to pick that just by going um, the D and the high E string together on the beat one. Beat two is going to, the thumb's going to play the G string. And then on the upbeat, you're going to have the B string. Then on B3, the, uh, the thumb is going to play the D string, followed by the high E. And then you're going to uh, kill it for the fourth beat. So we have this. All right, so basically, you're doing the same uh, progression each time. The first time, you're ending with that D7. And then you go back through everything again. And then the you're gonna end it with a with a F sharp diminished. So basically, you're gonna play that whole section twice. So the second, so you're gonna go through all, all the way, ending it with D7, then ending it with F sharp diminished, then go back through the four chords again, ending it with D7 the third time. The fourth time, you're gonna end it with um, that F sharp diminished again, and that's when he kind of uh, kind of ends it with this cool little thing. So. Going into that, that last time you play that F sharp diminished, so um, this will be the second time you play this chord. He basically does this. He picks those outside notes and he picks the picks the the D string and then he picks the G and the B together. I'm just doing that with my um, index and middle. Then he picks the D again and then he's gonna take the two high E string, high E and the B string together. So we have this. Uh, So, and then we just have the phrase where he kind of picks this a little bit, and what he's going to do is going to move up to to the eleventh fret. So you're going to go from the fourth fret all the way up to the I'm sorry, the thirteenth fret. I'm sorry. And what are you going to do now? You're going to have to use your ring finger. You're going to pick the G string, B string, and high E string here. You're taking that same chord shape you did, move it up to the thirteenth fret, and just pick the G, B, and high E together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move it down. A very popular thing to do with diminished chord voices is you just take them down three three frets at a time. So always move down three frets. So you're going to start here, then move down to the from the 13th to the 10th fret. You're going to pick the D string, and then those three strings, top three strings again with your uh, index, middle, and ring. And then move down three more frets to do the same thing. So that's at the 7th fret, then three more frets to the 4th fret, do the same thing. So the first one you heard, he didn't hit the note on the D string, so we went. And then the last one, he just really does the outside notes. Kind of the first fret on the D, high E string, and back down to the D, and then, and then we're back to the verse. So that's a, a cool little ending there. All right, so that interlude was pretty intense. Uh, we gonna we we are going to end the track. There's a little outro at the three minute and two second mark, and it's just basically uh, you're playing that first chord in the verse, and you're just playing like. So you're just rotating thumb on the D, then the high E string, then thumb on the D, and open B. As he plays that, he starts slowing it down, and you're going to end it with a third fret on the high E. Alright, so it's a fun track once you get it up to uh, tempo, but like I said, really just kind of feeling it and getting it that fast, you got to feel that, that thumb is really kind of uh, driving the whole thing, um, and then it's easier to kind of lock in with the feel of it. Alright, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.